What's up guys? This is Engineer Jack. So pag-usapan natin ngayon yung corrompissibility of soils. So yung topic natin is the consolidation and compression, the pre-consolidation, the settlement in clay. We have a primary consolidation settlement and secondary consolidation settlement and the time rate of consolidation. Pero for this presentation, yung naka-highlight lang na kulay pula, yan muna yung pag-uusapan natin. So we have two words here, the consolidation and compaction kasi these two process, uh, ito yung mga nagkakos ng settlement in our soils. So, ano bang difference between them? The compression of saturated soil under steady static pressure is termed as consolidation, which is completely due to expulsion of water from the voids or the elimination of water voids in soil. Ang kaibahan ng consolidation sa compaction, the compaction naman is the elimination of air voids in our soil. So, while soil is compressed, in our strength materials, every material undergoes a certain amount of strain when a stress is a Applied. So, in strength of materials, di ba, pag nag-apply tayo ng load in any material, pwede mag-undergo ng deformation. So, for example, a steel rod lengthens when it is subjected to a tensile stress and the concrete column shortens when a compressive load is applied. The same thing holds true for soils which undergo compressive strains upon loading. The compressive strains are responsible for settlement of the structure. What distinguishes soils from other civil engineering materials is the fact that the deformation of soil is largely unrecoverable or pwedeng permanent. Therefore, simple elasticity theory like elasticity cannot be applied to soils. Kasi, di ba sa elasticity theory, pag tinanggal natin yung load, pwede pa magbalik sa original size or sa original length yung material natin. Pero, magkaiba siya this time sa soil. So, we have two words here ulit, the cohesive and non-cohesive soil. So, ano bang kaibahan nila sa isa't isa? Kasi, gamit na gamit natin ito, especially dito sa uh, soil mechanics, yung dalawa words na yan. So, yung non-cohesive soil is any free-running type of soil such as gravel or sand whose strength depends on friction between soil particles. Or, yung non-cohesive soil, ito yung mga coarse grain soils. And yung cohesive soil naman, for example, yung clay, which is finer soil or finer grain soil, hardens to a nearly cement matrix when dry. So, for non-cohesive soils, water drains faster and the load is transferred immediately. Kasi nga, di ba, mas malalaki yung particles niya, coarse grain soil nga, just like gravel. So, mas madali yung mag-flow yung water sa soil natin. And consolidation does not occur in non-cohesive soils. In non-cohesive soils, this process is called compression. We have conditions in our pre-consolidation. We have the normally consolidated and over-consolidated clay. So, sa so normally consolidated, the present effective overburden pressure or PO yung designation natin is PO is greater than or equal to the maximum pressure the soil has been subjected to in the past. And yung symbol natin for the maximum pressure is PC. And to sa over consolidated naman, the present effective overburden pressure or PO is less than the maximum pressure the soil has been subjected to in the past. For example, uh, the load has been removed. So yung present effective overburden pressure or PO, ito yung average effective stress at the middle of the clay layer. And the pre-consolidation naman or PC, it is the maximum effective vertical overburden pressure or stress that a particular soil sample has sustained in the past. So, paano ba nangyari yan? So, for example, a maritime clay soil or soil, tapos ito yung ground level, and maritime point A or particle point A dito sa soil, ngayon, a meron yung stress na gamma height or the unit weight of the soil times the height kung saan yung depth ng particle A natin. Ngayon, let's say, uh, ginamit ko na PC kasi, for example, ito yung past experience or the past pressure na dinadala ng uh, particle A. So, as time goes by, for example, nagdagdag tayo ng soil or nag-elevate yung soil natin. Siyempre, for example, ngayon to, so yung present natin or PO, uh, mas greater than sa past kasi nagdagdag nga yung ano natin, yung layer natin. So, yung PO natin is greater than PC. Or ito na mismo yung normal consolidated. Ngayon, pag nag-excavate naman tayo ng soil sa taas ng A, so syempre, mababawasan din yung stress natin, the present natin, and yung PO naman natin is less than the PC. Ito naman yung tinatawag na over-consolidated soil. So, for this next slide, as you can see, meron tayong relationship between the void ratio and the pressure. Pero yung pressure natin dito is na nakalogarithm scale. So, itong line na to, this represents the loading curve in our soil. So, for normal 
normally consolidated, yung loading curve natin is linear. Pero pag over consolidated na yung soil natin, may part ang loading curve natin na non-linear. And nangyayari to pag yung load natin is removed. And tandaan natin guys, ng void ratio is the volume of voids all over the volume of solids. So magagamit niya natin sa mga susunod na slides. So the pre-consolidation pressure determination, this is the Casagan Drip Method 1936. So paano ba natin makukuha yung PC? So may solution guys si Casagandre. Uh, these are the steps. Meron tayong 7 steps. Yung una, uh, the E log P is established between lab testing. So kukunin natin muna yung loading curve ng void ratio and the pressure. And determine point A at which E log P has minimum radius of curvature. So saan ba sa curve natin yung may minimum radius of curvature? Then select that point. Then uh, tawagin natin na letter A. Then number 3, draw horizontal line from A which is line AB. Dapat yung line AB natin is parallel dito sa x-axis natin. Number 4, draw tangent to the curve at A which is line AC. So, magdraw tayo ng tangent at A. Ito na yung AC natin. Then number 5, draw line AD to bisect angle BAC. So, yung BAC natin guys, ito yung BAC. Then, i-bisect natin, ibig sabihin, yung angle between uh, BAD and DAC dapat equal. Kaya nga, bisect kasi divide sa 2. So, after natin i-bisect, yung number 6 step is project the straight line portion of GH back to the intersect AD at F. From H, mag-draw tayo na tangent line papunta dito. Kung saan sila nag-intersect dito sa AD, ito ang tatawagin natin na letter F. And ipaproject natin ito pababa hanggang sa logarithm of P. And ito na mismo makuha natin na pressure. This is the PC or the maximum past experience na overburden pressure natin. So ito yung pag-determine guys ng pre-consolidation pressure natin. The compression or consolidation of soil layers due to stress increased by construction of foundations or other loads. The compression is caused by the deformation of soil particles, the relocation of soil particles, and the expulsion of water of air from void spaces. O ito na mismo yung consolidation natin. So yung causes of settlement, we have three causes. Pwede alien causes, shear stresses, and compressive stresses. So sa alien causes, uh, pwede subsidence. Ay nangyari yan due to uh, earthquake faults, mga ganun. Meron din tayong cavities o yung mga sinkhole natin sa soil and due to excavation. Yung pangalawa naman, the shear stresses or uh, pwede mag-cost ang settlement due to shear stress or the bearing capacity failure. Ngayon, yung pag-usapan talaga natin dito sa presentation natin, the compressive stresses na meron tayong three settlements, the immediate settlement, the primary, and the secondary. This type of settlement is what we will consider in this chapter or in this presentation. The settlement of a soil layer under applied load is the sum of true broad components or categories. So yung una, uh, the elastic settlement or immediate settlement. Uh, the elastic or immediate settlement takes place instantly at the moment of the application of load due to the distortion but no bearing failure. And bending of soil particles, mainly clay. So dito guys sa consolidation, uh, yung consider natin na type of soil is clay. It is not generally elastic although theory of elasticity is applied for its evaluation. It is predominant in coarse grain soils. Yung pangalawa natin, this is the consolidation settlement. So, meron tayong dalawa, the primary and secondary. So, the consolidation settlement is the sum of two parts. So, in this compression of clay is due to expulsion of water from pores. The process is referred to as primary consolidation. And the associated settlement is termed as primary consolidation settlement. Commonly, they are referred to as simply as consolidation and consolidation settlement. And pangalawa, the secondary consolidation settlement naman, uh, the compression of clay soil due to plastic readjustment of soil grains and progressive breaking of clay particles and their interparticles bonds is known as secondary consolidation or secondary compression. So nangyari to guys na secondary uh, after ng primary, uh, the total settlement of a foundation can be expressed as ito yung mga designation natin yung, or yung mga variables natin na ginagamit sa components of a settlement. So yung ST natin, is, this is the total settlement. SE or elastic or immediate settlement. And SC, the primary consolidation settlement. And yung SS, this is the secondary consolidation settlement. So yan yung tatandaan nyo guys sa mga variables na gagamitin natin in this presentation. Ito yung mga, ano, mga reasons kaya nagkakaroon tayo ng mga settlements. So unahin ko muna guys yung immediate settlement. Due to distortion or elastic deformation with no change in water content and 
the immediate settlement occurs rapidly during the application of load and quite small quantity in dense sands, gravels, and steep lakes. Kaya nga, immediate kasi instantly. Yung primary consolidation settlement naman, uh, it decreased in voids in volume due to squeeze of pore water out of the soil. It occurs in saturated fine grain soils, so basta pag may meron tayong low coefficient of permeability or ito yung, yung velocity natin dito is mahina or mabagal. And yung primary consolidation settlement only significant in clay and silts. Sa secondary consolidation settlement naman, due to the gradual changes in the particulate structure of the soil and it occurs very slowly, long after the primary consolidation is completed. So time dependent guys yung secondary settlement natin. It is most significant in saturated soft clay and organic soils and peats. So ngayon, pag-usapan natin yung calculation of primary consolidation settlement. So we have a given saturated clay soil layer with thickness H and cross-sectional area na A. Yung area natin is constant. And existing overburden pressure, PO, or this is the effective stress. And the increase in pressure equal to change in P. So find the resulting primary consolidation settlement, SC. So for example, meron tayong two phases. Yung saturated nga, ibig sabihin walang air. So yung combination lang natin is the combination of water and soil solid. So yung V natin, this indicates the total volume equal yan sa height, total height, times the area. And this is the volume of voids natin, kasi nga walang air, yung volume of voids natin is the water lang. And yung volume equals yan sa area times the height, and the height of the volume of voids. VO, ibig sabihin, uh, the volume of voids initial. And we have also the volume of solids natin, equal yan sa height ng solids times the area. Yung change in volume natin, equivalent yan sa change in height times the area. Then, yung babago lang, yung change in height natin. Yung area natin is constant. Ngayon, yung change in height natin, ito na yung primary consolidation settlement natin, or SC. The initial void ratio natin, equivalent yan sa the volume voids initial over the volume of solids, equal din yan sa the height of the volume initial all over the height of the solid. Kasi nga, di ba, yung volume natin, equal yan sa area times height. Eh, yung area natin, uh, kinansel na, kaya yung naiwan is the height na lang. We have also the final height na, as you can see, due to force or load, magkakaroon tayo ng change in height. And syempre, yung volume natin, uh, liliit, kaya magkakaroon tayo ng final volume of voids, na equal din yan sa the final height of the voids times area. Tandaan nyo guys, dito, kahit ano mangyari, yung volume of solids natin, hindi babago yung volume. Equal pa din yan sa height ng solid times yung area. So, magkakaroon lang tayo ng uh, initial and final void ratio. So, the change in volume natin, equivalent yan sa change in height times area. And yung change in volume natin, pwede ding sabihin natin na change in volume of voids lang. Uh, hindi magbabago yung volume of solids natin, yung magbabago lang yung volume of voids. And yung change in volume of voids natin, equivalent yan sa the difference between the final volume of voids and the initial volume of voids or VVF minus VVO. And yung change in volume of voids natin, equivalent din yan sa the change in void ratio times VS or the volume of solids. So yung VVF minus VVO natin, equivalent din yan sa HVF minus HVO times area and yung change in void ratio times volume of solids, equivalent din yan sa the final void ratio minus initial void ratio times Vs. And the change in void ratio times Vs, pwede din sabihin natin, equivalent din yan sa the change in void ratio times the height of the solid times area. And lahat yan guys equal, no? So from here, lahat yan equal. So let's say, uh, kukunin ko the change in height times area, equate natin yan dito. So the change in height times area, equivalent yan sa the change in void ratio times the height of solid times area. So cancel yung A or the area and yung maiwan, the change in height natin equivalent na sa change in void ratio times HS or the height of the solid. Ngayon, yung, yung void ratio natin or the initial void ratio equivalent yan sa volume of voids all over the volume of solid. So let's say, mag-add ako both sides ng VS over VS. Pwede ka mag-add. As you can see, cancel naman yan. So for simplify natin, so 
So, 1 plus EO equivalent sa the volume of voids initial plus the volume of solid all over the volume of solids. Ipin natin i-simplify ulit na yung 1 plus the initial void ratio equivalent yan sa the total volume all over the volume of solids. Or 1 plus EO equals sa V over VS. I-arrange lang ulit natin. Ngayon, yung VS natin equivalent yan sa the total volume over the 1 plus initial void ratio. And ang Vs natin or the volume of solid equal din yan sa the height of the solid times area. And yung total volume din natin equal yan sa height times area. So as you can see, cancel ulit yung area. So ngayon, maiiwan is the height of the solid equivalent yan sa the total height all over the 1 plus the initial void ratio. Ngayon, kukunin ko to guys and ito. So yung Hs nga natin equal, equal yan sa height o total height all over 1 plus the initial void ratio or EO where the change in height is equal to the change in void ratio times HS or the height in solid. So, substitute. So, ngayon, magkakaroon tayo ng the change in height equal yan sa the change in void ratio times the total height all over 1 plus the initial void ratio. And yung change in height natin, ito na yung the primary consolidation settlement natin. Ngayon, i-derive natin yung pinaka-final formula naman para sa settlement for normally consolidated clay soil. So, as you can see, meron tayong ulit relationship between the void ratio and the pressure. And yung pressure natin naka log scale or na naka logarithm scale. And ito yung uh, loading curve natin. Ngayon, yung slope of this curve, yung tinatawag natin itong uh, CC or the compression index. This is the slope of the E log P curve for normally consolidated clay or soil. And for normally consolidated clay, para masabi natin na normally consolidated, yung present effective pressure is greater than to the past effective pressure or PC. So, let's say, meron tayong two points sa line natin or sa dito sa curve natin. So, itong first point and itong second point. Yung first point natin, let's say, uh, may corresponding void ratio yan. Then, yung second point natin, meron din corresponding void ratio. And, syempre, meron din corresponding uh, sa x-axis natin, which is the pressure. Meron tayong PO para sa first uh, void ratio. And, yung sa second void ratio natin, meron tayong PO plus change in pressure. Yung slope natin, will know that the slope is equivalent yan sa rise over run and equal din yung rise natin the negative indicates the pababa yung slope natin. Yung rise natin or the numerator is the difference between the final void ratio minus the initial void ratio or EF minus EO. And yung run natin naman, the difference between the logarithm of the final pressure minus the logarithm of initial pressure. Or as you can see, meron tayong logarithm law. Pwede gawin natin yan the logarithm of PF all over PO. So, yung PF natin, ito na yung initial PO or initial pressure plus the change in pressure or PO plus change in P. So, ito na yung CC na yung the difference nga yung final void ratio minus initial void ratio equivalent yan sa negative change in void ratio. All over the logarithm of the final pressure minus the logarithm of initial pressure. Ngayon, yung change in void ratio natin equivalent yan sa the compression index or the slope of the curve times the logarithm of PF over PO. And yung PF nga natin is equivalent nyo sa PO plus change in P. So, kanina, yung may formula tayo na derived nga na change in height nga, ito yung primary consolidation settlement equivalent sa change in void ratio times the total height all over 1 plus the initial void ratio. Uh, Subject natin itong value na change in void ratio, magkakaroon tayo ng formula na SC equals to the compression index times the total height all over 1 plus EO or the initial void ratio times the logarithm of PF over PO. So, for final, uh, yung PF nga natin is the PO plus change in P. So, ito nang pinaka-final formula natin for normally consolidated clay in solving the settlement. Then, yung designation natin is SC. Ngayon, yung CC natin or the compression index, equivalent yan sa 0 0.009 times LL minus 10 or yung LL, this is the liquid limit. And this according to Scampton, 1940. So, itong CC, yung ito yung gagamitin natin para sa formula ng SC or the primary settlement. Ngayon, pag-usapan naman natin yung isolving the SC for or the settlement for over-consolidated soil. So, this is the relationship between the void ratio and the pressure. As you can see, this is the loading curve natin. Meron tayong dalawang line and magkaiba yung slope nila. So, sa unang slope, this is the new slope na tinatawag natin na CS. And yung CS, this is the swelling index. And yung pangalawa, 
dalawa, ito yung original na slope natin or this is the slope CC or the compression index. So as you can see, meron tayong 4 points. This is a point 0.1, point 0.2, point 0.3, point 0.4. So sa point 0.1, uh, meron corresponding na pressure which is PO and this is the second point na may corresponding pressure. And yung third point or yung corresponding pressure dito is PC. So meron tayong change in height between the first two points and yung the change in void ratio 1 or change in E1, ito naman yung the difference between the void ratio 0.1 and the 0.3. And yung change in E2, ito naman yung difference between the height of a 0.4 and 0.3. Ngayon, meron tayong dalawang cases dito sa over consolidated clay. Ay yung first case natin, if PO plus change in P is less than PC, uh, ito yung formula natin. Yung SC natin or the settlement equal yan sa change in height times H all over 1 plus EO. Kasi yung consider natin, kasi yung if PO and plus change in P is less than PC, ang consider natin na slope, itong CS. And yung two points na consider natin is 0.1 and 0.2. Nang difference nga nila in void ratio is change in E. Ngayon, uh, pag check natin yung CS, yung CS natin is equivalent to rise over run, pero pag inayos natin, the change in void ratio natin equal yan sa CS or the swelling index times the logarithm of PO plus change in P over PO. So, isubstitute natin to guys sa SC. Ngayon, magkakaroon na tayo for case 1 na formula na SC equal yan sa CS times H all over 1 plus EO logarithm of PO plus change in P all over PO. So, gigamit natin ito only for case 1. So, para naman sa case 2 guys, if PO is less than PC and PC is less than PO plus change in pressure, uh, yung formula naman natin for settlement equal yan sa the change in E1, H all over 1 plus EO plus the change in E2, H all over 1 plus EO. So, yung i-consider naman natin dito, yung first 0.1 and 0.3 and 0.3 and 0.4. Ngayon, yung change in E1 natin, equal yan sa the CS, kasi nga, yung E1 natin, or the change in E1, yung i-consider natin na loading curve is the swelling index. Kaya magkakaroon tayo ng CS times the logarithm of PC over PO. And the second change in void ratio naman natin, or change in E2, ang i-consider naman natin is the slope CC, or the compression index. So, yung change in E2 natin equal yan sa CC, the logarithm of PO plus change in pressure all over PC. So, ngayon, meron tayong final formula para sa, sa case 2 natin for over-consolidated clay. Uh, yung formula natin for SC equal na sa CS H all over 1 plus EO logarithm of PC over PO plus CC H all over 1 plus EO logarithm of PO plus change in P all over PC. So, medyo mas mahaba to compare sa case 2. And yung kailangan nyo lang guys is sa ulo yan na formula. And yung CS natin, it ranges only from 1 fifth to 1 over 10th of CC. So let's solve an example problem. A soil profile is shown in the figure. If a uniformly distributed load is equal to 100 kilopascal or the change in P is applied at the ground surface, what is the settlement of the clay layer caused by primary consolidation if letter A, the clay is normally consolidated, letter B, the pre-consolidation pressure PC is equal to 200 kilonewton per square meter, and letter C, if PC is equal to 150 kilonewton per square meter. So yung soil natin meron tayong dalawang type of soil. Meron tayong sand and clay. So this is subjected to a pressure of 100 kilopascal and meron tayong water table 2 meters from ground level. So ito yung ground water table natin. So meron tayong dry unit weight of sand which is 14 kilonewton per cubic meter and saturated unit weight of sand na 18 kilonewton per cubic meter. So for clay naman meron tayong given a unit weight of saturated clay na 19 kilonewton per cubic meter. And we have a void ratio of 0 0.8 and liquid limit of 40%. Uh, so, muna natin yung settlement when the clay is normally consolidated. And use CS equal to 1 over 5 CC or the compression index CC. So, solution, uh, yung part A muna. Uh, first, solve muna natin yung average effective stress at the middle layer of the clay. So, ito yung guys yung PO natin. Yung PO is equivalent yan sa 2 meters times the unit weight dry of the sand plus 
four times the difference of the saturated unit weight of the sand and the unit weight of water times 4 meters plus half lang ng clay layer so 3.5 over 2 naka meters yan times the unit weight of saturated ng clay minus the unit weight of water so meron tayong equivalent niya na equals sa 2 times 14 plus 4 times 18 minus 9.81 plus 1.75 times 19 minus 9.81 so meron tayong effect stress na at the middle layer of the clay, meron tayong PO equals 76.08 kN per square meter or kilopascal. So, yung gagamitin natin na formula for normally consolidated clay, yung settlement natin equal yan sa CCH all over 1 plus EO logarithm of PO plus change in pressure all over PO. And CC natin, yung gagamitin natin na formula is 0 0.009 times LL liquid limit minus 10. Substitute the liquid limit. So, meron tayong 0 0.009 times 40 minus 10 and meron tayong CC na 0 0.27. So, yung SC natin, uh, i-substitute natin lahat ng values na. So, CC is 0 0.27, height is 3.5 of the clay and the void ratio is 0 0.8. The PO is 76.08 and the change in pressure is 100 kilopascal. So, ngayon, meron tayong uh, equivalent na settlement na 0 0.191 meters or 191 millimeters. So, sa part B naman, meron tayong given na PC equal to 200 kilopascal. And yung PO natin, same ulit, na 76.08 kN per square meter. Ngayon, yung check natin, if case 1 or case 2 for over consolidated clay. So, PO plus change in pressure equal yan sa 76.08 plus 100 na equal sa 176.08 kilopascal. And it is less than the given PC which is 200 kilopascal. So, ngayon, yung case natin is case 1. So, ang gagamitin natin na formula for case 1 for over consolidated clay, meron tayong given na formula na SC equals to CSH all over 1 plus EO logarithm of PO plus change in P all over PO. And CS natin equal yan sa 1 over 5 CC na ang CC natin is 0 0.27 all over 5 equal sa 0 0.054. So, substitute. So, meron magkakaroon tayo ng value na settlement for part B na 0 0.038 meters or 38 mm. Ngayon sa part C naman, meron tayong given na PC which is equal to 150 kilopascal. So yung CS natin, yung gagamitin natin 0 0.054 and CC natin is 0 0.27. Yung PO natin, same ulit, na 76.08 kN per square meters. So check ulit natin kung anong case. So PO plus change in P is equal to 76.08 plus 100 or 176.08 kilopascal. And it is greater than sa given na PC which is 150 kilopascal. So ngayon, in this time, case 2. So, sa case 2, medyo mahaba yung formula. Ito yung formula na gagamitin natin na may SC equals to CSH all over 1 plus EO logarithm of PC over PO plus CCH all over 1 plus EO logarithm of PO plus change in P all over PC. So, substitute the given values and meron tayong the settlement na for part C which is 0 0.0675 meters or 67.5 millimeters. So, that's it. Thank you. So, kung may mga tanong kayo guys just comment and thank you very much